Welcome to lecture six in a sequence of lectures about the hidden Markov model in which we're understanding the representation and the reasoning that can be done with the hidden Markov model. Previous lecture, we looked at a way in which we could represent coin flips behind a curtain with several different state models. State models that had different number of unknown parameters associated with them and that are equally good for understanding whether or not a coin being flipped behind a curtain is, being, is landing on heads or tails. What I'd like to do in this lecture is to think about a similar rep a motivation for a hidden Markov model, but instead what we'll use is we'll use a jar of candy instead. We'll call them M&Ms. In this example, what we want to consider is that we have a set of n different jars. Each one of those jars contains M&Ms, and the color of the M&Ms, or the distribution of colors, varies between the different jars. For example, in this diagram, Jar 1 has kind of a normal distribution of M&Ms, a variety of different colors. Jar 2 has a holiday assortment of M&Ms, red, green, and white. And Jar N has just red M&Ms. Each one of these jars can have an M&M chosen from it, and when an M&M is chosen from it, there's some probability of getting a particular color. So for example, in Jar N, the probability of getting a red M&M is 1, and the probability of getting any other color M&M is 0. So in jar N, Bn sub 1 is 1. That means the probability of drawing a M&M that has a color number 1 is 1. But if we look at the first jar, and we look at that first distribution of candies, we would say that the probability of red, the probability of yellow, the probability of orange, the probability of green, the probability of blue, um, those would all be about equal. The probability of white would be zero because that's not observed within our jar, at least in this diagram. So as we draw an M&M out of this jar, our probability of getting a red is going to be much lower than drawing out of jar number M. And then jar two has a different distribution um, also it has a 33% chance of drawing a white M&M, a red M&M, or a green M&M. So the way we're going to play our probability game here, the um, way in which we're going to motivate our hidden markup model, is we're going to say that we have M different colors of M&Ms. You can see that the bottom row, in this case, white is, being, is the mth color, mth color. And we're going to draw one M&M at a time on our beat, just like a Markov model. And we're going to choose which jar we're going to draw from based on the previous jar that we drew from. So, and that will give us a sequence of observations. So let's, um, let's walk through what this might look like. So perhaps we'll start by drawing from jar 1. And from jar 1, we'll draw an orange M&M. So our first observation is orange. Our first state is jar 1. Now we'll proceed to a second jar. Which jar we go to next depends on a transition probability given that we're currently in jar 1. So let's say that the next jar we go to is chosen randomly to be jar 2. And from jar 2, according to the probability distribution of candies that are in that jar, we draw a green M&M. We can only draw red, white, or green, so that seems appropriate. Now we're going to choose a new jar to draw from. And this time we're going to draw from jar N. Because the only thing that we can get from jar N is a red M&M, we observe a red M&M. Now we make another transition to another jar, and this time we end up staying in the same jar and drawing another M&M. Again, it's red. We, on our next beat, we pick another jar, we choose jar 2, and we get a red M&M as well. And so from this example, we see several things. First of all, we see that we get a sequence of observations, but we don't know the, the way the hidden Markov model works is that we don't know which jar it's drawn from. And we know that multiple jars can produce a red M&M, for example, in fact, all of them in this case, but some of them can produce a red M&M uh, with higher probability than others. So our, our goal is to try and understand this model and be able to formalize it so that we can reason about it. To reason about it, we have to talk about this model, whether we're talking about the coin flips or the candy jar, mathematically. And that's what we'll tackle in our next lecture. Thank you.